Hey folks, Vinny here, To Be On The Water Guide Service, also Vin's Bug Shop. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to tie a zombie caddis. It's a cross between my, my wired butt caddis and my death stonefly, okay? I'm going to tie it in olive, but other good colors are blue, and for steelhead, pink works awesome also, okay? Uh, pieces and parts for the hook, we're going to use a Mustad C67S with a bead. I'm going to tie up a size 10, but size 6 and size 8 are also good good to use, alright? Size 6 is really good for salmon. Alright, and then the bead, you can oversize the bead. I'd like to oversize the bead, but for now it's just the appropriate size bead, okay? And then we're going to use medium olive ultra wire, alright? We're going to use chartreuse holographic tinsel. Okay. Get it in there. This stuff's really nice. You can also use silver because um, we're going to use all of medium vinyl rib. Okay. So you can use silver tinsel underneath this also to give you a nice effect. Okay. And then for up toward the head, we're going to use ice dub and peacock. All right. And we're going to use a dubbing loop. I'm going to show you a little trick to that. Um, but that way it flows. Everything flows backward. All right. And the water is going to undulate, look real nice, a lot of flash to it. Okay, good fly. All right, so let's get the hook in the vise. Okay, thread from behind the bead, and we're going to go down past the bend of the hook a little bit. You can eyeball it and you can figure out where you want to start tying in your wire at. So, but I'm going to go about right there. Snip that. Then take about a two inch or three inch piece of wire, okay? And you're gonna tie it in side of the hook that's facing you. Alright, and you're gonna lay enough of the wire down so that you can get five wraps of the wire. You need five wraps. So we lash it in at the bottom, alright, where our tying point is. We came to the top. We're gonna go back down. This is going to secure the wire in. Alright, and we're going to come right back up. And take the thread to the bead and just let it hang. Alright, then we're going to take five wraps of the wire. Alright, we're going to go under and pull it toward us. So there's one. Alright, keep it nice and tight. Two, three, four, five. Alright. And just have your wire pointed up that way, right, up and out of the way. So five wraps of the wire at the base. All right. Then we're going to tie in our medium olive vinyl rib. Make sure that you tie it the flat side is laying up against the hook, okay? This is what's going to give us a nice segmented look. All right, so lash this in right behind the bead. Take our thread all the way back to that last wrap of wire. Alright, right up to that wire, right there. So your thread's running right along that that wire. Alright. Alright, so now that's all secure. Okay, now take a couple inch piece, uh, three inch piece or so of the tinsel. Tie that in. Doesn't have to be pretty. We're going to wrap this forward, so just tie that in. Alright, again, right back to that wire. And bring your thread forward and just let it hang. Now what you're going to need to do is you're going to pick up the vinyl rib and you're going to take the tinsel and you're going to go under the vinyl rib three times in between the vinyl rib and the wire. You're going to do three wraps. Try to get hold of it. Just watch that hook point because it will break the, uh, the tinsel. I'll cut it. Okay, so we're going to go three. Alright. And pull your vinyl rib back a little bit. And then now we're going to take the tinsel. We're going to start right at the rear. And we're going to wind it forward. Okay. Nice and easy. Like a coverall. Okay. You don't want any of your thread showing. Just want to make sure you cover it all up. Sometimes it's a little tricky to play with. You can put this stuff in a 
bobbin if you want it to. I just like rather wrap it nice and neat, nice and easy. And then take it up to the bead. And then secure it with three wraps. One, two, and give me that three. And two in the front. And then we're going to snip that. And we're going to push that thread away. You don't want to snip your thread. Alright. Now, we're going to bring the vinyl rib with the wire forward. So, you're going to take the vinyl rib and you're going to pull it under, under the body. And make sure it doesn't twist on you. Okay? You want that flat flat part of this laying on top of the hook okay so we're gonna pull it this way and then we're gonna bring the wire forward right with the vinyl rib okay so we're coming under and we're gonna bring the vinyl rib and the wire forward together okay should get about three and right about there you're gonna Secure it. Three wraps over the top. And a lot of folks say don't throw the bobbin like that, but I just want to secure this in. Okay, so three wraps, and that leaves you enough space around the head here to work our eye stub in. Okay, I snip that, and I have a pair of scissors to snip the wire, so um, some people just break it, I just snip it. So then that little piece of wire that's sticking up, take your bodkin and just push it down. All right, you don't want that sticking up, so just push it down. All right. Now, for the dubbing loop, uh, a lot of folks use the dubbing twister tool. I can't find mine. I haven't, haven't been able to find it for a while. And I tie a lot with CDC flies, and the dubbing loop is wonderful with those using CDC. All right, so what I use is these guys here. I use these for our cat fishing and carp fishing. All right, see how it has, like, the clasp here? You can... Stick that one end on and pull it right back off. So it goes on and it also comes off. See that easy. Alright, so we're going to use this to create our dubbing loop. And if you're looking at my fingernail there, I cut that off. I cut that fingertip off in the police academy. So somebody left the weight sitting where it shouldn't have been. Um, so I went through the police academy with a pin sticking about an inch and a half out of my finger. Um, so yeah, it looks ugly. I'm sorry. <laughs> So, make the loop, finger, take a couple wraps, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the thread around the loop once, twice, alright, and then just one, two, three, whatever, and there's your dubbing loop right there, alright, so we're going to put our dubbing in, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this here, and it's going to go... Right on here. She wants to cooperate here. Get on there. Why give me problems? There we go. Alright. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take a pinch of our ice stub and peacock. Okay. And we're going to get this in here. You don't need a boatload of it. But we're going to get this in here. Alright. So it looks like this. And then we're going to twist. Alright, and get your thread out of the way. And you let this weight hang down here. I turn turn the hook a little bit. So they're just like this. And then I'm gonna swing. I'm gonna swing that weight and I'm gonna spin it. Spin it, spin it, spin it. And what you get is this nice little dubbing brush. Alright. So once you get that done, you're gonna take two or three wraps of this. Alright, look at that, look how nice that is. It's gonna give you nice legs, nice movement. It's gonna look real nice. So we're gonna go one, two, fold them back. I think three. Three might be overkill. I think two is gonna be perfect here, okay? Look how buggy that's gonna look, alright? So we're gonna take our thread. And we're gonna go three over the top to secure that in, okay? We're gonna secure a dubbing loop. Three. One right behind that bead. Make sure you get right behind that bead. Two. And then three. Alright. And now that's all secured in. Take your scissors. Snip off the dubbing loop. Remember to push that thread forward. Because you don't want to snip that thread. Alright. So dubbing loop's away. Alright. And you can play with this and however you want it. If you don't want so much, just...
pull some off, but there. See how that looks? And, it all, and when that gets in the water, all that just moves and pulsates. Looks really nice. Alright? So take two more behind the bead, then get your whip finisher, and do five. Five turns. Right behind the bead. Two, three, four, five. Now watch, because you do not want your thread getting caught on the eye. Because if your thread gets caught in the eye, what's going to happen is, is you're going to have thread over the bead. And you don't want to have thread on the bead. Keep the thread right behind it, okay? I'm going to do five more turns to make sure it's nice and secure, okay? So it's not going to come undone. One, two, three, four, five. And there we go, all right? Then we're going to add some head cement, which everybody knows I like the... The fly tight by fly right. All right. So get in touch with Ty. He will. He'll take care of you. It's good stuff. Head cement all around there. Okay. Snip your thread. And there you have it. A zombie caddis using the dubbing loop, wire, vinyl rib, and some holographic tinsel. All right. And and like with most of the stuff I show you guys, you can tie this in any color you want. This olive here and blue work well for steelhead. You can do an all black one if you want. And it would just look like a stonefly. It wouldn't be a caddis. So. But I don't think it matters. As long as it looks buggy, the fish are going to eat it. That's what matters, making it look buggy, okay? And there you go. Zombie caddis. Thanks for watching. Hey, please check out my Facebook pages. Uh, to Be On The Water Guide Service and also Vin's Bug Shop. Go to YouTube, check out the rest of my videos. Alright, stay on YouTube, check them out. Thanks for watching, hopefully you guys will uh, catch some nice fish with the zombie caddis. If you guys uh, get out, tie this up, catch some fish, please send me some pictures. Greatly appreciate it. Alright, zombie caddis.